Now we're going to summarize the four quantum numbers. Remember what the quantum numbers were. Those are quantum mechanic numbers that represent the states, the position, the energy levels, and so forth of the electrons in orbits around the nucleus. Now when we say orbit, that's kind of a misnomer. We should call them orbitals. These are shapes that were determined by the solutions of the Schrodinger equation that define the probability of where we're going to find those electrons, the highest probability of where we're going to find them. And those probabilities define the shapes of the orbitals where the electrons will reside. The shapes of the orbitals, the energy levels, and so forth are defined by what we call four quantum numbers. We have n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, n being the principal quantum number, L being the orbital quantum number, M sub L being the magnetic quantum number, and M sub S being the spin quantum number. That's the easiest way to remember them. Remember that the, the principal quantum number defines the energy levels. The first level, which is the innermost, lowest energy level. The second level, which is the level above that, which is higher. Third level, above that, which is higher, and so forth. So there's multiple energy levels where the electrons can reside. We also have names for those energy levels. The innermost energy level we call the K shell. Uh, the second most energy level is the L shell, then we have the M shell, the N shell, and so forth. Within those shells, we have regions that are defined by the angular momentum magnitude. So depending upon uh, what kind of angular momentum they have, they will, the electrons will reside in each shell in a subshell. We have different subshells. We have the S subshell, the P subshell, the D subshell, and the F subshell defined by the value that we place on the orbital quantum number, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So for the zero, uh, for the orbital quantum number equal to zero, we talk about the S subshell, which is a spherical subshell. When we talk about the orbital angular momentum quantum number being equal to one, we now talk about the P subshell and so forth. And in each subshell, we have one or more orbitals. In the S subshell, there's only one orbital. In the P subshell, there's three orbitals. In the D subshell, there's five. In the F subshell, there's seven orbitals. Now, they're part of defined by the angular momentum direction. So for each angular momentum, which defines a subshell, there are angular momentum directions. We notice that in the S subshell, there's only one angular momentum direction, which is zero, meaning there's no angular momentum direction. In the P subshell, there are three angular momentum directions, and there's three associated p orbitals for that. In the D subshell, there's five angular momentum directions, and there are five subshells, or I should say five orbitals. In the three, in the L equals three uh, quantum number, orbital quantum number, this is the F subshell, there are seven orbitals in that, and since each orbital can have two electrons, it would therefore be room for 14 electrons. Now, we have numbers associated with the magnetic quantum number, which is related to the angular momentum quantum number, which really makes sense because if the orbital quantum number or the angular momentum quantum number is associated here with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so forth, which indicates how much angular momentum each electron can have within that subshell, we also have a definition of what direction those angular momentums will be pointing to, and since those are quantized relative to the direction of the z-axis, how much of an angle separating the angular momentum vector from the z-axis can be defined by the angular momentum uh, quantum number, or the magnetic, as we call the magnetic quantum number. In the P subshell region, there's three directions. In the D subshell, there's five directions. And in the F subshell, there's seven directions. And finally, what we find is that each electron can have a spin up or a spin down orientation. Electrons spin on their axis, and they can either be spin up or they can be spin down. Spin up, we associate the spin quantum number with a positive one half. Spin down, we associate the spin quantum number with negative one half. This is just a mathematical representation, which simply means one is spin up, the other one is spin down. But it's this property that allows two electrons to exist in each orbital. Otherwise, there will only be room for one electron in each orbital, and we'd have a very different universe at that point. So, four quantum numbers. Energy level, defined by the principal quantum number, the angular momentum magnitude, defined by the orbital quantum number, the angular momentum direction, defined by the magnetic quantum number, and the spin direction, defined by the spin quantum number. Four quantum numbers defining the position, the orientation, the angular momentum, the direction, 
the energy level and so forth of every electron in, uh, in and around the nucleus of an atom. So there you go, a nice little summary, and now we'll get into a little bit more of how to figure out how electrons fill the, orbital, uh, the orbitals and the shells around each nucleus of each atom. And we'll see that in the next videos.